My name is Adrian Shaughnessy, and I'm one of the co-founders of Unit Editions. Uh, Unit started, we're, we're almost, we've just passed our fifth birthday, we've been going for five years. And it came out of a conversation that I had with Tony Brook, one of the, the other uh, founding members, that um, we were both, we're both in a very similar position, but we, we'd arrived at it from, a, from different angles. He'd been very frustrated um, designing books for um, mainstream publishers, and I'd become very frustrated working with mainstream publishers, and we both had kind of independently reached the, 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 the position where we wanted to start our own um, publishing house. Well, we have a tagline. We say, um, I have to get this right, we say, design books uh, for designers by designers. And really all that's saying is, is, is we're not, we're, we're designers first and foremost, not, not publishers. We're interested in books, designers are interested in books. It always amazed me that when I dealt with mainstream publishers that they sometimes, they, 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 they wouldn't know a, a lot about the books they were publishing and they wouldn't know how directly to speak to, to designers. We, we know how to do that. So that's why we, our tagline is, is what it is. We can talk directly to designers, ask designers. Um, and the way we choose our, our titles to publish is it's a long, drawn-out process. Tony and I argue and debate and discuss endlessly. But essentially, we, we want books that uh, are different, the sort of books that mainstream publishers just wouldn't touch, they wouldn't know how to deal with. Um, and we want a mixture of contemporary and historical. But we have one rule when it comes to historical books, and that is that the, the subject matter has to be relevant to a contemporary audience. So if we didn't feel that you could learn anything from a historical figure, we wouldn't do it. But the books we've done, like Ken Garland, FHK Henrian, Herb Lubalin, there is so much as a designer that you can learn from these people. They are, they're not only were they great designers, but they were amazing people. And they conducted themselves in a way that I think is, is exemplary. So we'd always choose subject matter that we felt had contemporary relevance. And that applies to the text. The text looks at that looks text looks to find what those points are, but also the design. Because we're designing historical subjects, the books aren't designed historically. They're designed with a contemporary viewpoint. Okay, for a case study, I think I'd like just to look at um, these two books we've done here on design manuals. And this came out of a... Um, the reason we did them was when we were working on one of our first books, which was a book on total design, uh, we went to the Total Design office in Amsterdam and they had the most amazing collection of, uh, of, of old identity manuals. Now, most people today don't have to deal with identity manuals. They use a PDF or a, a website that gives you all your templates. But before the internet, if you were implementing an identity or you were, if you were creating identity, you had to produce a manual. And these manuals were massive, big, hefty volumes, usually ring binders, that gave you every possible instruction that you needed to implement an identity. Uh, and these, these books are amazing. They are beautiful pieces of, 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 actually beautiful pieces of information design. They are extraordinary things. But most of them are being chucked out. Who needs them anymore? Because you, if you've got to, you can put all these guidelines, all these identity rules, you can put them on, online, much easier than these huge expensive books. But we found this uh, tranche of them, and we spent ages thinking, what should we do with these? We were thinking of a kind of a very sort of cheap, inexpensive publication. But when we started to work on it, we realized that it needed a book that kind of, that, that did these manuals justice. So we've ended up with these two really hefty volumes. Um, and we've been absolutely knocked out by the success of the first one, uh, which came out only about six months ago, uh, and pretty much sold out, not quite instantly, but, but sold out very quickly. And it mystified us um, hugely as to what the attraction was, but I just think it's this, it's this something to do with the kind of tactile nature of, of these original materials, these original manuals, 
uh, and the fact that they are beautiful things and, and you know amazing pieces of information design. It's been phenomenally successful, and I think um, it's a mixture of how we present them. I mean, we go to great length to make sure that all the material that, that is in here is photographed immaculately and retouched immaculately. And our, our rule is we don't show anything that you can't read. So if, we, if we're shrinking down one of these manuals, we're only going to shrink it down as far as the, the legibility will be held, maintained. Um, so you can study these things as if you have the original, if the original manuals. And they are absolutely beautiful things. They come from all over the world. They're done by very smart people, people like Paul Rand, um, you know, some of the best designers ever have, have designed these manuals. Where design is concerned, Tony usually starts, he sits and starts thinking about it. He might then work with one of the spin design team on, on, a, on, a, um, on, a, on a grid and a layout. And then Tony and I get together and we start discussing it. What are, what are, the, what are, the, what are the parameters? And we quickly realized here that we needed to show these things as realistically as possible because their attraction is the fact that they are amazing pieces of production, amazing specimens of print and printing. Uh, so he and I will start discussing and eventually, at the same time I'm thinking about the editorial content, what, what texts do we want, what commentaries do we want, what captions do we want, and eventually it comes together in a kind of editorial and design combination. And um, it goes back to something I said earlier, that, that the thing that's really important to us is that the, although some of this stuff is 30, 40 years old, we always set it in a, in, the design has always got a contemporary bite to it. We don't want to produce corny, outdated um, design. And some design books fall into that trap of being about a historical subject, so they feel that the design has to be historical. We don't, we don't think that. Um, so the, the, the fact that we use contemporary fonts and contemporary um, design and layout is, is, is really important to us. I think the only thing, if we're going to do a third volume, we might look at is we've got quite a lot of um, style guides, manuals, guidelines that are quite um, that are quite small. They're not necessarily these. Most of the most of the work featured featured in these two um, volumes are big, big manuals. There is another kind of layer of type of manual which is much smaller, uh, so we might look at, we might look at that. Um, but we, we have enough material, we know we've got enough material to do a, a third volume. And the nice thing that happens with something like this is, is people keep contacting us and saying, hey, I've, in my attic I've got this and I've got that. Um, so we could do a third volume easily, but we might want to look at a slightly different kind of manual. Because, we're, because we've upped our um, production, we've had to increase the, the, the team. So uh, we're now looking at uh, permanent, we've got a permanent staff purely working on um, unit editions of three, a designer, an editorial coordinator, and a kind of communications person who's at talking, using social media to talk to our audience. Uh, and then we piggyback off the spin team when we need extra um, muscle. Uh, so at any one time, there might be five or six people working on unit editions. Um, but we realize if we're going to keep the momentum up, we need more. Somebody once said to me a really good thing. They said, nothing succeeds without the right number of people. And I think you can muddle along for a while with kind of, you know, just a few hands. But if, at some point, you need the right number of people. And I think we're, we're moving towards that.